For number seven, it says state the domain and the range given the graph. So your domain is your x values and the range is your y values. The first thing I want to do is I want to write all my ordered pairs. So I could list them here. I could list them on the side, whatever works for you. So I'm going to say, okay, with this first point would be over negative three and we stay at zero. So negative three, zero. Negative two, one. One, two. Sorry, negative one, two. Stay at zero, go up to three. And then we go over one, up four. Okay, so for the domain, we write that in set notation, so with our braces, and we have negative three, negative two, negative one, zero, one. So we have the x's there. Okay, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. So we have five points, five numbers, none of the x's repeated, so that makes sense. And then my range would be my y's. And it looks like none of those repeated either. So I have 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4. Also written in set notation. For number 8, you are just taking this 0.75 and you're plugging it into x. So I'm saying when the function is at 0.75, I take 6 times 0.75. And what is 6 times 0.75? 4.5. Okay, for what value of x, so that's what you're finding, x, is the value of f of x equal 4x minus 7 equal to 17? So this, you plug it in for the whole f of x. And you solve the equation for x. So we add 7. We divide by 24, and that would be 6. Okay, for number 10, it says identify the domain and the range of each relationship. So for the domain, we have our x's, which is the first number of each ordered pair. I have 2, 4, and I have 1, 2, 3, 6's. So I write it one time. Okay, since that's my domain, I can go ahead and put 2, 4, and 6 in the domain here of the mapping diagram. For the range, I have 6, 5, negative 4, 9, and 1. So my least is negative 4, 1, 5, 6, and 9. So I have five numbers and five numbers here, and they're all different for the y's, so I should have five. So I'm going to list those numbers in the range. And to create the mapping diagram, I already listed my domain and range, but I go back to here and it says two goes to six. So I draw two to six, six to five, six to negative four, four to nine, and 6 to 1. And is this a function? No, because the x is repeated. Okay, it doesn't ask you to explain, but I'm just writing on here so you know why it's not a function. The x is repeated. I have three sixes. I cannot have repeating numbers in the domain. Okay, number 11. Tell whether the function shown by each table is linear or nonlinear. Explain your reasoning. So we are looking for a common difference, meaning we want the same number on the x's and the y's to make it linear. So from 0 to 1, that's an increase of 1. 1 to 2, increase of 1, 2 to 4 increase of 2. Alright, now here we have 0 to 1, 
is 1. 1 to 4, that's an increase of 3. From 4 to 16, that's an increase of 12. We also see that you could be doing like 0 times. Ooh, nothing can make 1. Okay, because 1 times 4 is 16. So you can see there's different patterns here, but it's not a common difference. It's not a common difference. So this is nonlinear. And we can say there is not a common difference. In part B, we see that from 1 to 2, we increase 1, 2 to 3, and 3 to 4, that's an increase of 1. On the Y column, we increase 1, increase 1, increase 1. So since we have the same on the X's, common difference here, and there's a common difference here, this is linear. Now, in the bottom part here, number 12, we're asked to look at the two graphs and decide which one is linear and which one is nonlinear. So linear would be your straight line. And nonlinear would have your curves. So this would be nonlinear. Okay, moving on to the last two questions we have. Number 13, you walk up a hill and stop to look at the view for an hour because continuing up the hill or sorry before continuing up the hill sketch your graph to represent your elevation over time so we have you walk up a hill and stop to look at the view so here you are down here at the bottom of the hill you walk up a hill you stop to check out the view for about an hour okay and then you continue up the hill So that would be my sketch of that scenario. Okay, now, for the table, identify the independent and dependent variables, then describe the relationship using words and a graph. So here we have our independent and our dependent, which is X and our Y. So the W has to be on the X axis. So I check my graphs. W, nope, W, nope. Yes, yes. Okay, so I know that it's not A and it's not B. Now, I have to check. I'm going to zoom this out a little bit. Or zo yeah, zoom out. So we have to check our numbers. So for weeks on the X, we should be labeling 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, that looks good. Here, they labeled 5, 10, 15, 20. That has to do with your Y. So that's your, or your money. That's not going to work out. If you look on the side here for the y-axis for M, 5, 10, 15, 20, that's what they labeled here on the side. So this graph matches our table. We can check 1 to 5, over 1, up 5, over 2, up 10. Yeah, it works. So that would be C.